Have you ever bought a used car? If you're like the majority of us, you probably have. Did you also realize that approximately one third of stolen vehicles are now rebadged and resold? That's right. Unfortunately, if you bought a used car recently, there is a risk that you actually bought yourself a stolen vehicle. The worst part is, in most cases, if you have yourself a stolen vehicle and it's recovered by the police and the courts, there's a great chance that the insurance company won't pay for it and you're out yourself however much money you spent on that vehicle. And you might have spent twenty or thirty or forty thousand dollars on that used vehicle and you can pretty much kiss that goodbye. Sadly, we're here in the story of where some police are actually advising, for example, in Canada and in Toronto, they're actually advising, allegedly, to put your key fob, yes, this actual device, which is actually transmits and receives signals to your vehicle. And when this is closer to your vehicle, it actually works because it's a proximity sensor. So the further away it is, the harder it is to detect. So the police are actually advising putting your key fob right next door to your front door so the would-be thieves are able to easily steal your vehicle. And the worst part of that is you are sitting at home, unlikely suspect, somebody walks up, these thieves, they have their trickery and they're able to get your car started and drive it away. That is the worst part. Some of the other factors to consider are some of these thieves are so motivated because this is a, such a lucrative business. The front end gets paid, the middle guy gets paid, if they strip it, they get paid, and on the other end where they're selling it, after it's been rebadged, they get paid. Everybody's getting paid. And word has it, even there are people on the background at the registry's office that are also in on the hawk. So as one example reported, there's a gentleman by the name of Derek, I won't leave his, I'll leave his name, last name out, but he actually reported that he bought this Ford F-150. A 2022, he picked it up here in Toronto, Canada, and unfortunately, after some sleuthing and some digging, he was able to actually trace back the fact that that truck actually had roots to Utah. That's right, in, down in the United States is actually where the VIN number reported that that vehicle was from. The worst part is, Derek actually bought the truck from a dealership. And we all put faith in the dealers that they're going to do the right thing, they're going to do the background checks. And buying from a dealer usually meant, or back in the day meant, that we could buy successfully, we could buy with confidence and inspiration that we're going to get another great vehicle in our next purchase, but the fact that we can buy this in comfort and knowing that we're not going to get ripped off. Huh, that ship seems to have sailed now, hasn't it? Now, Derek had a few telltale signs here, and some of it, it was obvious and some of it less obvious, but in retrospectively speaking, it started to make more sense. With the key fob, this individual, Derek, for example, just for the sake of not mentioning last names, actually always found that utilizing the app with his cell phone never showed the proper amount of fuel. So in other words, he looked on the gauge of the vehicle and it might have said three quarter of a tank of fuel, but on the app it said an eighth of a tank. And always wondered why that never worked. He also wondered why the remote start feature didn't work. That's because the remote start wasn't connected with the VINs to that vehicle. So the hardware inside that vehicle was not correctly adapting to the VIN that was it was expecting to see. Now, where are these VINs located? Well, a VIN is a vehicle identification number, and you can usually find those at least in a couple of easy to pick spots. One of them being at the lower section driver's side of your dashboard, you'll find that thin strip and you have those digits laid out right there. That should then also match up with a VIN that you find once you open the driver door down there in the panel, you'll find down in the jam, there will be a sticker that also has the vehicle identification number. And that VIN should never be gone. And also that VIN should match the VIN up on the dash. And if it doesn't, oh, red flags. But that's only one part of the check because clearly that was a match. So what a lot of these would-be thieves are actually doing is they're stealing VINs and scratching them off or taking them, ripping them off, cutting them from vehicles that have been wrecked, demolished, or removed from service. They're somehow getting their hands on a pair of matching VINs and then they're reinstalling them on a vehicle that was stolen, then hence giving you a vehicle that has a VIN that doesn't show or declared as stolen at registries. Sometimes they'll walk through parking lots looking for VINs on vehicles in a big parking space and they'll clone those. Or even better, they'll go to a wreck yard, a salvage yard somewhere, and they'll go cut those off of a respective vehicle. We all see those pick your part, you know, all those those types of little uh, auto wreckers that you see all over the place. 
a lot of times those vins are still on the chassis of the vehicle and a lot of these thieves will start cutting those out taking those they're worth a fortune to some of these thieves the sad part is Derek was out all of the money and the insurance company literally would not own up to it or give him any of the reimbursement for the loss of this vehicle or the funds now a lot of these thieves know that there's gaps so you might have a vehicle in one state or one province and yet they're not communicating that registries does not necessarily communicate to other states and provinces so you could have a title wash in one state but the other state may not have any recollection. All they look at is you bring that vehicle, they have this VIN now to be registered out of state or out of province. They bring that to registries and they type it in the system and there's nothing registered in that state or province. Okay, it's a new vehicle to the state or province. And therefore, a lot of times there's no communication link between those two locations. And that's where a lot of these crooks and criminals know exactly how the process works. And they're looking for those loopholes and gaps to actually get away with this. So what are the things that you as a buyer can do to literally avoid some of those problems and pitfalls? Spending money on a vehicle that's stolen or losing your shirt altogether. Nobody wants to lose all their hard-earned money. So there are some little tips and tricks that you can go at to actually try to look for and, and it gives you a much better fighting chance. Like for one example is I would strongly suggest look at those VINs on any vehicle that you're searching for. Have a good look. Maybe try to poke and prod. Now the one up on the dash is usually hiding between the windshield and the bulkhead. It's right up on the firewall almost and it's almost impossible to physically touch. But look for weird, you know, anomalies. Look for bubbling or lifting or maybe numbers aren't, you know, washed or inconsistent. It should be a solid stamp, should be consistent and easy to read. Also, look on the one on the on, on the door jam of your vehicle. Also, should not be bubbling, should not be lifting, coming apart. They should match with the one up by the windshield. Another tip that's going to help you. Again, none of and not one of these items will fix the problem, but definitely if you pull a Carfax, it can often tell you if there's been a, an active title involved or if there's been a collision involved, and it'll give you a little bit of the history. So if you're looking at a vehicle, it starts to force you to ask the question. If all of a sudden you've got this vehicle and it says it was written off, well, that's definitely worth asking about. And at the very least, who wants to buy a broken, smashed up vehicle anyway? I'd say walk away from it. And my advice would never be buy a wrecked vehicle. Even if they've rebuilt it and, you know, it's got a rebuilt title, I would basically walk away from it. So definitely get a Carfax in your hands. And also in certain provinces, states, car proof as well, never hurts to double down. Especially now in today's day and age, where they're blowing the roof off of stolen vehicles. But fortunately, Derek wasn't totally out of hawk here. So the insurance company would not pay for it, but it wasn't until Derek went back to the dealership where they, in good faith, actually paid his money back. Now, they don't all have to do that, and Better Business Bureau will probably push a lot of these vendors to do those types of transactions. But at the end of the day, there's no guarantees in life, but death and taxes, we've talked about that. However, one thing to think about is, if you're buying a vehicle like this that you are suspecting could be an issue, or any used vehicle for that matter, I would always strongly suggest every transaction should be done with paper trail. And at the very least, I would avoid cash deals. And if you are going to do some sort of a cash deal, make it some sort of an electronic transfer or some form that you can validate where it went to. Now, you don't think this is happening in your backyard? Absolutely. So registries is another place that we trust them with confidential information. And yet, there was charges in Ontario alone of 73 employees who were charged with getting involved in the theft associated with VIN tampering as well over $5,000. So clearly there's a lot of people in the backyard working at your local registries that might be involved in this. So while governments are trying to get ahead of this, registrations are trying to get ahead of this, car dealerships are vastly informed with what's going on in this industry, the fact remains is it's very lucrative. Thieves know what's up. They know how to steal these vehicles. They know how to rebadge, revin, and retitle wash. And only the consumer at the end of the day usually gets ripped off. Everybody in between seems to take a piece of the pie. So I just want to give you a word of caution. If you're buying that next used vehicle, you do all the appropriate checks so you too can avoid getting ripped off. Definitely want to see that video. Hey, 2024s, some of the best buys. If you're looking for incentives, that might be your bet. Hope to see each and every one of you in the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.